Okay, and lastly, in the use reducer section, I want to show you the approach we use as our application grows. Basically, as we're getting more and more actions, and we handle them in the reducer, it's not going to be easy to keep it in one file. As you can see, it's getting hard to read. And therefore, we just essentially split it up. Of course, in our case, we have only three actions. So this is only going to make sense if you're getting more actions. But still, the structure is going to be exactly the same. And if you want, you can work on it yourself. Essentially, create a new file. I'm going to call this actions.js. And in this case, since we're not going to be creating a component, we can get away with just JS. I think this is too much. And then you want to set up all the actions from the use reducer in there, and you want to export them. And of course, you want to import them in the use reducer, since you'll still need to use them, you just want to keep them in a separate place. And as I said, no, this is not reducer. This is actions like so. Well, then you also want to do the same thing with the reducer. Copy and paste the logic in that file. And then keep in mind that you'll still need an actions. So yes, you'll have import for actions in two places in use reducer, as well as the reducer JS. And then lastly, from the reducer JS, export reducer, and then import it in the use reducer. So let's get cracking. I'm going to go with new file. I'll call this actions JS. Beautiful. And then the second one is going to be reducer JS. As far as the actions, I think it's going to be more straightforward. Where in the reducer, I just want to grab them here, copy and paste. And we simply want to add those exports since we'll use them in the use reducer as well as the reducer. So now if we go back to a use reducer, we want to go above the default state. Remember, we have a bunch of things right now coming from the file. And one by one, we can just access them. So clear list, first one, then reset list. And then lastly, we have remove item. So all of them are coming from the actions. And if everything is correct, then our functionality is still going to work. So that's the first step. We separate the actions. Now let's do the same thing with reducer. And just so we can speed this up, I can tell you right away that we'll need those actions in the reducer. So copy and paste. Yep, that's going to be the setup. Pretty much for every action that you have, you'll need to import it most likely in two places where you dispatch it and also in the reducer. That's quite typical setup. So let's go with our reducer right now. Take this one out. Copy and paste. And then we want to export. So export default. And then reducer. Beautiful. Let's save that. And then back in the user reducer, we also want to import the reducer. And I'm going to try to do the auto import. Let's see whether that works. Yep. So I can nicely grab my reducer. And like I just said, if everything still works, which by the way, it doesn't, the data is not defined. Ah, you see, something really interesting that I forgot to mention. Of course, we also want to grab the data in the reducer right now, since we are using it over here. So let me add that one to a readme, where I have the reducer, import actions, import data. So let's go back to, I guess, user reducer first. Let's copy this one. Since it's in the same folder, we don't need to change the path. Simply want to copy and paste. And now everything should work. So let's try this one out. I can clear, I can reset, and I can remove them one by one. So those are the fundamentals of user reducer. And now we're ready to move on to the next topic.